Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a terrifying movie called The Grabbers. Watch out and take care. A small group of fishermen were only five miles out of port when one of the guys saw something falling into the water. The captain's guess was that it was a flare, but while they were learning about the crash signals nearby, something terrifying grabbed one of their crew out of the water, and then the rest of the crew. The events take place in Ireland, on the island of Erin. While some here start their mornings with alcohol refills, others arrive on the island with a spark in their eyes with a desire for justice. And these people work in the same field, the police. A girl, Lisa Nolan, who has just arrived to do her duty and an inveterate alcoholic, Shade, who asks the girl to hurry up and get on her way. In the meantime, a townsman walking his dog finds the carcasses of discarded sea creatures on the shore, which already makes you think of new guests on Earth. Lisa arrives to replace the head of the department. Milk. Uh, yeah, what kind? Cows. I I'll just take a black, thanks. For two weeks due to his absence, because in his opinion Shane can't handle such a job, and into one of the fishermen's traps falls the very creature, but he does not question the nature of its origin, only boasts to his partner, on whom the creature descends a jet of liquid. The girl works in the Dublin Central, where there are all sorts of criminals, but on their island, quiet and smooth, but she warns that there are devils in the still waters. On arrival on shore, Adam, a marine ecologist, gets acquainted with Lisa and tells her that they are black dolphins, they died in the sea and their bodies washed ashore, but he knows nothing about the appearance of their deep wounds on the body. Shade arrives at his acquaintance for help, while the fisherman, wearing a welding mask, brings the creature into his bathtub. An officer asks a man named Cooney for help in removing the dead dolphins from the shore. Toward the end of the job, however, the boss sends the kid to pick up a tool, but he finds strange objects nearby and is about to leave with one of them, but he is immediately grabbed and dragged into the water. When the boss can wait no longer, he returns to the shore for him and finds only the tool. And Shade goes back to his favorite place, the bar, where he meets Lisa, who goes out to get an iron from bartender Brian and hurries away. The bartender's wife Una assumed that Shade liked Lisa, so she decided to help with some advice, because to take her as an example, her husband had been waiting to propose to her for eight years, so she didn't want the girl to suffer. Shade of course listened to the chatter, but noticed the strange look in the eyes of the same fisherman named Patty. When the old man tried to tell him about the sea monster no one believed him. Meanwhile, his partner, who had been urinated on earlier, gets a knock on the door. It turns out to be Cooney, but his strange condition does not embarrass his wife and husband and they try to talk to him. But when Cooney falls, the man runs out to help him and a monster grabs him from the roof, and the wife locks herself in the house, but becomes another victim when she tries to close the chimney leaving only her slippers by the fireplace. And Shade, on his drunken head, comes to get to know Lisa better. But we are interested in fisherman Patty, who upon returning home, discovers in his bathtub, not a creature in a trap, but a strange ball, after which a monster attacks him from the corner of the room, then attacks him altogether. But the unexpected twist is that Patty defeats him. The next morning, Una offers Lisa a double bed for her in Shade, but the girl refrains from the offer and arrives at the police station. There she lets Shade out of his cell because he passed out during the night and she didn't know where he lived, just as Patty called. The fisherman claimed it was an unearthly creature for which he deserved a monetary reward. However, when they arrived at Adams, Could you put it on the eBay? What do you think? Shade noticed that Lisa was making eyes at the scientist. The ecologist told him that he had no idea what species the creature belonged to, because his tests had come to nothing. She tongue, yes, he assumes it is a doe, it has no testicles, its tongue is for feeding, this creature works like a leech, it sucks on its prey and feeds on the blood. When it tries to wash dirt off, this is what happens, so it needs blood and water to live, and when it shows the insides of the egg, no one was happy about the sight. Patty declared for all to call them grabbers, for he is their discoverer. As the officers were leaving, 
Shade spotted Cooney's car on the beach with his keys in it. They went to a house nearby where the brutal murders had taken place last night that they didn't know about. At the house, the girl started a conversation about Adam's decency, which made Shade even more aggressive. But when they noticed a rope sticking out of the chimney on the roof, the girl climbed up to check what it was. And Shade takes a moment to drink, but the girl pulls the rope and a human head flies out of the chimney, flying into Shade's nose. The local doctor makes the assumption that some animal did it, but Patty bursts into the room and shows them what happened at his house. After discussing where all the incidents took place and realizing that a monster can move around on the ground in the rain from last night, the girl recalls seeing a storm warning on today's news, and the fisherman mentions the caves near the Black Rock where he caught the doe. On the way to the cave, colleagues were discussing his drinking problems and before entering, a fisherman warned that before the tide is up for an hour at the most, the place will soon be flooded. The police head inside, and Patty stays at the entrance, where he again finds the creature's eggs, which already have some movement in them. And in the cave, the police find a fisherman's jumpsuit, and when Shade tries to yell to see if he's here, the creature appears out of the water, causing the police to run away sooner. You can't get through that guy. Asterisk they do manage to escape, but their request for reinforcements is denied because of the storm and they are told to ask for help again in the morning. The police come to the lab and set the dough on fire, but it triggers the sprinkler, and after they turn it off, they realize that the creature had gotten water, so it could come back to life. But when they got closer it didn't seem that way anymore, but it immediately attacked Shade and with all their might they tried to tear it off. When it succeeded, the creature vomited up Shade's blood and after that the team beat up grabbers. When Patty shows up at the lab, they can't figure out how he single-handedly got rid of the monster when the three of them could barely pull it off. But then it comes to them that the creatures can't tolerate alcohol and that's what keeps people alive. All they have to do is spend one night in this bar with a glass of hard whiskey. Brian of course is surprised by the monster and their suggestion to drink to poison the blood because splashing whiskey on them is a bad idea, and Patty thinks it's pathetic to spill alcohol at all. When his wife shows up, the company is not eager to show her the monster and Shade says they are planning something, so she leaves, and the bartender informs they that it's her birthday in a week, so she probably thought they were preparing a present for her, although the man hasn't even begun to think about it. Toward evening, the team decides not to tell anyone about the monsters so as not to cause panic, but Shade stays sober to keep an eye on things. Their experiment will require taking the blood of a drunken, healthy person and since Lisa has never been drunk before, Adam decides to take her blood. At the bar, the girl gets drunk out of her mind and Patty pulls out moonshine, with which the girl completes her intoxication. In the study, they take her blood and give the tentacle-less monster some to drink, after which he literally dies instantly. After measurements, it turns out that Lisa's alcohol content equates to 3.2 ppm, which is 10 bottles of beer relative to her height and weight, or you should drink whiskey for a better effect. When they go to the church to invite the townspeople to a party, Shades attempts to invite everyone to the party fail. Then a tipsy Lisa promises to arrest anyone who doesn't come, but Shade adds that the bar is free tonight, which is when the whole settlement is ready to leave their grey homes for a free drink. The hottest party on this boring island begins, while our heroes demonstrate the weapons they're going to use to fight the terrifying monsters. As the sun goes down, the bar closes and they start drinking more and more while a drunken Lisa admits to Shade that she actually likes him but the man thinks she's had too much to drink and calms her down. And while everyone was partying at the bar, the local doctor went outside to take a leak and noticed a baby monster behind him, or rather dozens of them, heading toward the bar. But he was lucky that when the monster attacked him, Shade and Lisa noticed it right away. And while everyone else was drinking at the bar, the police helped the man fight off the creatures. But in the next moment, a monster appears behind him and grabs the doctor and devours him, leaving him with only his head. As the police hide in the car, Grabbers is not about to let them go, but when the girl turns on her blinker, the monster switches its attention to the glowing thing. 
while Shade contacts the bartender and asks him to open the door, and when he comes out, only has time to look at the monster destroying the car for a couple of seconds, as they rather head inside. Their already half-alive Adam helps the bartender set fire to a nerf filled with gasoline to make a flamethrower so our hero can confront the creature, but on the battlefield he realizes that the rain has put out his fire, leaving him with nothing against this giant. Shade rescues him and drags him inside, ordering everyone to go to the bar to drink, and contrary to all expectations, the booze runs out, which means someone needs to go outside and change barrels. Shade asks everyone to go upstairs to continue the party, but no one listens and Adam's moonshine drunk Patty goes outside and comes face to face with the monster, wanting to take a picture of him for Facebook. The monster didn't eat him, of course, but threw him into the sea with considerable force. Then the cubs got inside and the whole crowd panicked and went upstairs and closed in. The monster, meanwhile, keeps knocking on the doors. Lisa gets the idea that the monster can be grabbed by Cooney's forklift and left to hang there until morning, thereby making it dry out, for without water it is incapable of going on living. For the keys of the pickup truck to go to the kitchen, the most drunken Lisa, Shade was against it, but eventually agreed. They armed the girl oh, careful. and she went into battle. Meanwhile, the guys remembered that a little earlier the female had wet Shade which means the male will look for him by smell, which means we can distract him so that Shade can get to the pickup truck and bring the forklift. The girl goes downstairs, where the monsters are having as much fun as they can. She sneaks into the kitchen, takes the moonshine, lighter, and keys, but is startled by grabbers appearing and starts firing a nail gun in a panic, but hits the panel and turns off the lights in the bar. As she runs away, her tentacles grab her, forcing her to knock over the lighter and the alcohol, thus starting the fire. She manages to grab the cleaver and cut off the tentacles, but people smell smoke and shade goes downstairs. Just as suddenly Lisa appears and together they manage to get the monster away from the bar. At the construction site they park unluckily and it ends up raining, but it all dries up in a couple of hours. The monster is already here and attacks shade but he has a plan to shoot the fuel barrels when he gets close, but then Lisa shows up and pins the monster down pretty epically, and so they smell that scent of victory as suddenly the monster grabs Shade and he manages to snatch the moonshine out of Lisa's hands and pour it into the monster's mouth, which causes him to toss the man and Lisa blows up the barrels with a flare gun, causing the monster to die. In the morning, the townspeople think they have won, while Lisa and Shade make their way to town and he decides to reduce alcohol consumption in his diet. And the girl thinks it's time for her vacation and he hints that the island could have been her home by now and then they finally kiss. However, they forgot about the monster eggs on the beach, which will still show them some real fun. No, please support the channel with your likes and subscribe. Our goal is 10,000 subscribers. We are trying very hard just to reduce your time in watching movies. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I won't say goodbye.